My parents called me Hugh, after a friend of theirs who was my brother's godfather. Now this always confused me, because I thought that he was my godfather, and as he wasn't, it might be one of the reasons I eventually rejected my given name. <laughs> My grandfather was a Church of England vicar, so he christened me in his church just before we moved to Pakistan. My father was teaching military stuff at the Staff College in Quetta. The very few memories I have are of my ayah, or nanny, whose name was Appa. Appa had a diamond in her nose and wore jingly ankle bracelets. She pretty much looked after me until I was two and a half while my parents got on with having a good time. My dad played polo and my mum sat around looking glamorous in dark sunglasses. When we arrived in Quetta, they handed me over to Appa and said, this is Hugh. Acha, Appa replied, shoo. No, Hugh, they insisted. Acha, Appa replied, shoo. Well, there was nothing they could do about it, so the name Shu stuck. In fact, for most of the time, she called me her little Shoe Saab. Appa only spoke Urdu, so that was the first language that I spoke. My father was pretty fluent in Urdu, so at least he could understand what I was saying. The only Urdu I can remember now is Salam, Cha, Chini, Doot, and Acha. I think my parents were happiest living there. Being so close to Afghanistan, Quetta is quite a different place now. Pakistan is quite different too. Having gained independence from Britain, the Pakistan army colonels that my father taught pretty much took over the government of the country. While my father was in the British army, we moved on every couple of years, so it was soon time to go back home. Appa was distraught when we left. I was her little baba. I have vague memories of the long, hot, crowded train journey to catch the boat. I had recurring dreams about it for years after. I always woke up in a sweat when a toothless swami grinned at me through the window. Passenger airplanes were still very expensive and only for the really rich, so we sailed home in style aboard the SS Cilicia. By the time we got back to England, I'd lost all my Urdu and was only speaking English. After garden leave in West Kirby, it was off to Germany where I was to start remembering stuff about my life on my own and not just from family stories. So stay tuned for the next exciting episode of Drawing My Life. <laughs> Will I ever cut my hair? Should I really have eaten those aspirins? And who set fire to the house? <laughs> Click the links to make sure you're subscribed so you get updates about my channel and find out more about my weekly schedule of drawing, advice and inspiration. Then see what happens next in episode three of Drawing My Life. <laughs> in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.